is uh, two, two continuous segments that uh, epitomize uh, two of the themes that are prominent in the novel. Uh, Seven Days begins with the following disclaimer. None of the characters in this novel are real, nor are the places or psychoanalytic movements, even though the name Rio may conjure the real city of Rio de Janeiro. Lacanian analysis as described in the novel bears no resemblance to the branch of psychoanalytic practice initiated by the French analyst Jacques Lacan. Even the duration of time started, stated in the title bears little resemblance to what is commonly known as seven days. So don't start writing irate letters to my blog correcting this or that or asking for refunds. So here we go. <laughs> I went down to the Copacabana on my first night in Rio. I was told that most of the women were prostitutes who would gladly sleep with me for a hundred American dollars. I saw a sexy woman wearing high heels and an abbreviated bikini and decided that there was no sense in hesitating, since from what I'd heard about the lovemaking habits of Brazilians, one would be as talented as the next. I pursed my lips and made purring sounds like a pussycat to get the idea across. But the woman didn't seem to notice me, even though I was wearing a seersucker suit from the Brooks Brothers 1818 collection. There aren't too many men wearing Brooks Brothers suits, or any suits for that matter, down by the Copacabana, and I would have thought I stood out from the crowd. I have always found communication between myself and other human beings to be a problem, and often worry that I haven't succeeded with women where I otherwise might, because my words get caught between my teeth. So I just held out my hand to her as she waited for the traffic light to change. I'm Kenny, I said. Do you understand Anglais? I am new to your country, and I wanted to introduce myself while also initiating myself into your highly permissive sexual culture. I will put my cards on the table. I'd be glad to engage you to perform sexual acts on me for a fee. I don't speak a word of Portuguese, so for a moment I entertained the idea of simply squeezing her breasts and spanking her very ample and exposed buttocks. But common sense prevailed. I intuitively knew that it wasn't a good idea to touch the merchandise until we had worked out our fiduciary arrangement. Even if she walked away from me, I was convinced that if I had been more outspoken and demonstrative, we might be on our way to work. Our party had felt a little like the last scene of Casablanca. There was no plane waiting to take her away from me. There was no heroic resistance leader standing between us. No war. And I wasn't a hardened American patriot named Rick. Yet I felt I could hear the strains of it as time goes by, playing on the piano in some beat-up North African cafe. China, the very name created a frisson. When would I ever see my China again? It didn't take long to answer the question, as she walked right back into the auditorium, swigging from an even larger bottle of water. I still hadn't decided what my approach was going to be. If I took it for free, we would be in a real relationship, where raw emotion was the currency. And if I became China's patient, I would have to put her in the position of employment transference in an unethical manner. I felt I needed a therapist just to work out the mess I'd gotten myself into. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, uh, leave eighty one though. So great. <laughs> would you like to read it? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Because it's fun to have somebody. I think it's sometimes fun to actually have somebody else. Yeah. Okay. In very I think. I've been seeing China's vagina for so many sessions in a row, particularly in the early period of the analysis, had a profound effect on our relationship. Analysis has come a long way from the days when the analyst was regarded as a distant figure who rarely uttered a word. Many of the blatantly non-egalitarian elements of the relationship, in particular the one in which the therapist gets to know everything about the patient, but the patient knows virtually nothing about the person treating him, have been legislated out of existence in some of the recent amendments to the Civil Rights Act of 1968. <laughs> the study of transference can no longer be used as a vehicle for discriminatory behavior against patients. I am thankful to the great civil, right, civil rights leaders of the 60s, like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., <laughs> who, in bringing about racial equality, also opened the doors for affluent analytic patients whose rights were being violated on the Upper East Side by the double standards that evoked plantations of the Old South. Patients and analysis were no longer treated like indentured slaves who toiled to pay for their therapy and often received little in return. <laughs> on the other hand, what was going on between China and me was perhaps one beyond the liberties that had been envisioned by the courageous freedom fighters who had come before us. <laughs> <laughs> so that was great. So, 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 so,
so that you know what I mean. And that's oh. that is basically as we you know. Read by, by, by an analytic uh, patient. <laughs> right. <laughs> analytic uh, student. I mean, yeah. Because it is a real issue in psychoanalysis where the kind of so-called neutrality of the analyst can have kind of authoritarian type of kind of affect, as, you know, um, residues. Right. It leaves the feeling the patient feeling helpless. It leaves them feeling, you know, uh, it, and it's been questioned because there there have been changes in analytic thinking. So in the numerous form kind of. You're dealing with that's what you know, kind of like I find that sort of doing a humorous novel does. I mean, like when I write something, I can't unless I'm like I basically, if it's a parody of a person, I have to feel a sense of affection for them. It's a strange right. thing. I can make, I can car, I can caricature somebody, but I at the same time have to have some kind of relationship to that, that subject that I'm caricaturing, and it has to be one of a certain kind of interest. Obsession and, 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 and in the end, and ultimately compassion. And the same thing with issues. I mean, a lot of the issues are, you know, a parody in the novel. There are many issues that are parody in the novel, but those are issues that have come, you know, that have, that have come across that are on my uh, radar, basically. And they're things that I, that I think about. Obviously, anything therapeutic. I mean, like we live in kind of in, in therapeutic transaction is kind of the lingua franca kind of modern human existence, and that you know is you know obviously something that I partake in as much as I would like to sit and make my fun of myself. So, I mean, these, these you, but in a certain sense, it was very apropos that you brought that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, you know, that's 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 that passage up. That's 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 that's